In this video, we expand the dashboard from last week with a filter. By clicking on the filter button, a group appears showing the filter settings. Here, the user can select which column to filter, which operator to use and which value to compare. We start by importing the flows from last week. You can download the flows from my GitHub page linked in the description below. Before moving forward, we deploy the current flows to check if it still works. In the last video, there was a typo in the table columns, so I'll fix that quickly. My general approach to implementing a new feature in NordRed is to try it out using basic nodes such as inject, change and function. When I'm sure they work as I want them to, I implement them using buttons, dropdowns or whatever I need. The filter is just a payload that gets injected into the table. So we use an inject and a change node to implement a very basic filter. The payload is a JSON object with a command and arguments. The command is called setFilter. In the arguments we need to define field, type and value. The field specifies by which row we want to filter. The type is just the operator used to filter. And the value is the value we compare to. An important note here is that the field is not the table column title but the property defined in the table. So in this case those are id, the name with a lowercase n and h. Let's try our hard-coded filter by adding some data to the table. To make sure the filter works, we add two rows in our table, one not matching the filter. After clicking on the inject node, we see that only the row with my name as a name gets displayed. To reset the filter, we use the same change and just remove the values in the arguments array. When we remove the filter, all the rows in our table get shown again. The first step to our final implementation is a filter button in the command group. Let's add it below the delete row button. The name is filter and we use the filter icon. It's located between the add row and clear table buttons. We create a new flow called filter, where we can implement the actual filter. The filter needs two dropdowns and a text input in the dashboard. In the first dropdown we define the columns from the UI table. We need to make sure that the value is the same as the column property. The second is used to select the type, which specifies the operation we want to use. We implement basic operations like equal and greater than. The text input is used to input the value to be compared. Next, we add the filter group to our UI control flow, so it gets hidden when a new user connects. As we see, the filter group is hidden after reloading the dashboard. When the user clicks on the filter button, we want the group containing the filter options to appear.
Now that we have all the required UI elements, we can implement the actual filter. We use three different change nodes to create a flow object called filter, which contains all the required information. After selecting a filter, we can see the parameters in our flow.filter object. We create a button called apply filter. Let's use the filter icon again. When clicking the button, we load our flow.filter object and construct the filter in the same way we did with the change before. Using a link out node, we connect the filter command to the UI table. After adding some data, we test the filter on the name column. We see that the filter is working as expected. After applying a filter, the user should also be able to clear the filter. The button is called clear filter. We can use the same change as we used in the beginning. After applying the filter, we can click Clear Filter, which shows all the data again. Let's give the button a red background. We want the group to be hidden after clicking one of the buttons. Let's test the filter. The filter group appears after clicking on the button. We select the H column this time. After applying, only the rows which match the filter are shown and the filter group is hidden. By clicking clear filter, all the data is shown again. That's it for this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it and you could learn something.